Hi, we're starting this book. It's mirrored, but uh, it's called Wilfred Grenfell. And today we'll do chapter one. So this is how it's all going to end. The icy cold stab at Wilfred Grenfell's fingers and toes like a knife. He wished he could warm his hand and feet by a fire, but there was nothing to burn out here. And even if there were, his matches had gotten wet and when the dog sled went through the ice. It was dark now, and his damp clothes were frozen to his body. Even covering himself with the dog skin blanket and snuggling up to his biggest sled dog, dog were not enough to keep out the sharp edge of the Arctic cold. The wind was still howling from the northwest pushing the ice pan he was stranded at, on out to sea, and with it, hope of rescue. Beyond the bay was the angry, turbulent water of the North Atlantic. Now, in late winter, it gobbled up the chunks of broken up pack ice as they drifted out of the base, and as the sea pounded the ice pans to pieces, anything stranded on them such as Winfred and his six remaining dogs, would be tossed into the frigid ocean where death would come quickly. Wilfred tried to dismiss the thought from his mind. It did no good to think on such things. Besides, he reminded himself, he had been stranded on the ice pan now for well over 12 hours, and he was still alive. Maybe there was room for hope. But the cold was his enemy. He could feel the strength seeping from his bones. And he knew from his medical training that his body was descending into hy hypothermic shock. Novice, please come. Wilfred rubbed his frozen hands together to generate some warmth and thought about how he had gotten here. He had been on his way from St. Anthony on the northern tip of Newfoundland to Brent Island on the southern edge of Hare Bay, 60 miles south of St. Anthony. He had spent last night at Locks Cove on the northern edge of Hare Bay and set out from there at first light. But it was late winter and in the night, the wind had begun to break up the pack ice. The locals had warned him not to try crossing the pack ice on the bay, the shortest distance to Brent Island because it was unsafe. They had urged him to follow the coastline to his destination, and that is what he had done. He had followed the coastline for several miles until he noticed an ice bridge to an uninhabited island in Hare Bay. If he crossed the ice bridge to the island and then crossed the narrow sheet of ice between the island and the sh south shore of the bay, he would cut miles off of his journeys, journey and so get to his patient, a boy suffering from food poisoning, sooner. He took the risk and headed out onto the ice bridge. But what looked like a solid ice from shore turned out to be soft, Gooey shish, gooey shish ice. Partway to the ice island, the dog sled began to sink. Wilfred had had to cut the dogs free and abandon the sled, which quickly sank all the way through the ice. Wilfred and the nine dogs had made it to an, an ice pan where they were now stranded and drifting out to sea. When the afternoon shadows had stretched long across the bay and the temperature had begun to plummet, plummet, Wilfred knew he had to do more to stay warm through the night. He had to do the unthinkable. He had killed and skinned three of his dogs. Their hides now made up the blanket he was huddled under, providing some shelter from the icy bone-chilling wind. But he was losing the battle with the cold. He had dozed for a while, afraid that if he slept too long, he would never wake up. He thought he saw the sun rising, but when he looked closer, it was a bright full moon peeking through the clouds above. 
Wilfred snuggled closer beside Doc, trying to absorb every bit of excess heat the hulking dog produced. As he tried to drift off to sleep one again, once again, the words of a hymn that he had sung as a boy back in Parkgate Inland began to play over in his mind. My God, my Father, while I stray, far from home on life's dark way, O oh, teach me from my heart to say, Thy will be done. After a few, few minutes, Wilfred opened his eyes and looked up at the moon. So this is how it's all going to end, he thought to himself. How fitting that I should die on the ocean. His mind drifted back to his earliest memories as a child. They were of the sea. He had spent his whole life on or around the ocean. How he wished he were back in Park Gate right now, sailing on the est estuary of the River Dee in the Reptile with his older brother, Algernon. What a strange path his life has taken from those times that he should find himself adrift on an ice pan off the Newfoundland coast, headed for certain death.